Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Shout it out, said me, the battle rages. Shout it out, said me, the battle rages. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, we're going to continue with that message, uh, those, that message today. And uh, when we talk about the battle for our nation, the battle for our continent, and some of you thinking, well, I just want to get, I, I'm just trying to get through the day. No, no, God will give you the capacity. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. Someone once told me not to bite off more than I can chew. I told them I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I get a big amen there? <laughs> Bump your neighbor. Say, I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. Amen. Hallelujah. Says me, I'm part of the war. I'm part of the battles. Shout it out. Say, the battle rages. The battle rages. Amen. Say with me, I'm needed, you need it. I'm needed. Amen. So the day we gave our lives to Jesus, once again, we changed sides, joining the fight between good and evil, right, wrong, righteousness, unrighteousness. The battleground of the hearts in the, starts in the hearts of our lives, affecting the soul of our family's neighborhood and ultimately the soul of our the soul of our nation. Hallelujah. The battle rages. And um, therefore understand that we are in a spiritual, we are in a spiritual war. So that means we are in a spiritual war. And that's why parents, let me just throw this in, moms and dads, get your family in a church where the leadership is clear. Where it is clear, say with me, clear. clear. The message is clear. Where leaders are unapologetically and courageously teaching the Bible as the never changing word of God. God's word that is always right, God's word that is always true, God's word that is always accurate. And God's word that is always good for you. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. We don't want wishy-washy. We're done with wishy-washy. We're not at a place where, well, I'm not sure, I don't know. You better start knowing some stuff. Bump your neighbor. And you better start, tell your neighbor, you better start knowing some stuff. You, you understand? Well, I don't know. You better know. So get into a church. Make sure your children are here. Don't come to church alone. And that's why we looked at the first service where we ministered the word, the battle rages. The first thing you need to do is make your choice. Choose your side. Shout it out. Choose your side. Choose your side. And that's why Elijah said, how long will you falter between two opinions? Seriously now, choose. You want to impress everybody, keep everybody happy. No, you need to choose. You need to choose. If you're going to follow God, follow God. If you're going to follow your idols, Follow your idols. In Joshua 24 and verse 15. It says, if you're going to serve the gods of your fathers, and you're going to run after them and do your lame little thing. He says, then you go serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house. As for me and my house. You stay under my roof. You're a disciple. Not a lukewarm wannabe. Uh, four amens. Amen. Say with me, as for me. As for me. Okay, get some, get some passion there. As for me, as for me. And, my house. and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you stay under my roof, you serve the Lord. Amen. If I pay your salary, you serve the Lord. Amen. If you clean my shoes, you serve the Lord. Amen. It's holy shoes. <laughs> Can I get a big amen there? Amen. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Place before you life, death, blessing, cursing. Choose life. Choose life. And that's why Jesus said in the book of of, of, of Revelation 3.16, Jesus said, 
because you were lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. He says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. We say, well, you know, I would rather be lukewarm than cold. No, God says, no, 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 rather be cold. Rather be cold. Don't be lukewarm. Don't be lukewarm because the thing is lukewarm means you look hot, but you're cold. Your heart's cold. So you don't have a lukewarm heart. You have a, you have a cold heart, but you look, you look hot. That's lukewarm, which means you're a hypocrite. You come here, Jesus, Jesus, but you don't really believe him. You don't really believe the word. You don't do really what the Bible says. That's lukewarm. Jesus had a special word for people like that. He called them, you brood of vipers. In other words, you snake, you. Yo slung, you snake. Why? Because you act spiritual. Act if you, as, as if you're led by God, but you don't obey the word. Are you hearing me here today? He says, no. He says, I, I, I spew you out of my mouth. Why? Because you are the one that is keeping others from their faith. Because you look the part. That's why you can't see them. They look warm, look like the heart, but their hearts got no faith. Those are the people that once you leave the building and you speak to them, say, wow, what a word. I'm so convicted. Oh man, I, I need to repent. I need to get to God. And then that person says, no, 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 don't worry. No, no, that's Pastor Bird. Sometimes he's just over the top, that man. <laughs> you know, uh -uh. no, 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 he doesn't really understand. You know, you start giving excuses. No, he doesn't understand our stuff. He doesn't understand. You know, he's not, he's not, he's not, you know, you know, uh, you know, no, that, no, no, don't worry. You don't have to do it exactly like it is. You know, hey, mark that person. Because it looks the same. So when you see it's lukewarm, mark. Mark. He say, ah, snake. <laughs> snake. Mark. Because the thing is, the next line they're saying, oh, now they're praying and they're crying and it's all Jesus. But when you've got to do Jesus, no, then they've got excuses. Then it's lukewarm. So they look spiritual, but they steal the faith from people. Jesus says, no, uh-uh. Now we need to get rid of people like that. Amen? Amen. So let me choose your side. Choose your side. So let me choose your side. Choose your side. So if you're going to be cold, be cold. If you don't trust the Bible, then don't trust the Bible and say, I don't believe the Bible. Amen. I don't believe. Yes, don't have to argue. So when I'm with people, I don't have to argue with people. If you take the Bible, don't believe the Bible, then that's what it is. I, I, you, I don't believe I need to be in church every Sunday. That's fine. Then believe it. And we see where you are in 20 years. We see where I am in 20 years. Well, Pastor, I don't believe in tithing. Okay, we'll see where you are in 20 years. See, it's very simple. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to, but then choose. Why would you half? Either you believe or you don't believe. Can I get a big amen there? Yeah. It's ish, it's getting quiet in this church, yeah. Amen? amen? And that's why last week, what did we see? Last week we say, okay, we've got to have absolute commitment in choosing your side. You choose your side now, absolute commitment. Say so that means absolute commitment. Absolutely. And we looked at Luke 14. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, hate his mother, Hate his brother. Hate his sister. Hate his own life. The Bible says, you cannot be my disciple. Now that's rough scripture there, right? Now it's not that God is saying that we've got to go hate people. But what he's saying, he says that when you talk about your relationship with me, he says that you would hate you would hate unrighteousness. So it's not about hating the individual. He says, but you love me more than any other relationship. So any young people in the house? Yeah. He should say, oh, right. Oh, you love me. Okay, well, then you're going to give me some sh sugar. Ah, if you say you love me, then you will. 
No, 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 I love you, but I love God more than I love you. Until you put a ring on it, you're not seeing squat. Until you pay with your life, can I get a big amen there? And get a job, by the way. Hallelujah. Amen. No, no, no. Well, if you do this for me, as a husband, expectations on your wife, wife on the husband, how we one flesh. Oh, what, one in corruption? So in the corruption you won? As long as your family? Oh, please tell your wife. She said, tell them I'm not here. A lukewarm will then take the phone and say, my husband is not here, but he's sitting there. A godly on fire wife would take the phone and say, my husband told me to tell you that he is not here. Hello, somebody. Submission up to what point? Submission to your best friend up to what point? Now your best friend for life and now you sit and you gossip and you hurt and you berate and you destroy best friend what? Are you hearing me? Where do you draw the line? To steal for somebody? To be corrupt with somebody? To murder for somebody? Up to what degree? No. He says, if you don't hate, in other words, you love God more than you love any other relationship. Can I get a big amen there? Yeah. And that's why Jesus thinned out the crowd. He thinned out the crowd. He got rid of the crowd because the crowds followed Jesus. They wanted healing. They wanted food. They wanted money. They wanted wealth. They wanted prosperity. They wanted a few tricks, miracle tricks, man of God tricks. But they didn't want to change. They didn't want to change. They didn't want to be disciples. They didn't want transformation in their life. Came for their own needs and for their own desires to be met. They didn't want to be disciples. They didn't want to follow Jesus. They just wanted Jesus' stuff. They want Jesus' money. They want Jesus' healing. They want to make Jesus president. Because he can supply health and food. Are you hearing me? Just like the church today, we come to church for what reason? For your emotional needs to be met. For your guilt, absolution. So that you can be forgiven. So that you can go back tomorrow being your old selfish self. Everything's about me mentality except minus the guilt from the last week. Oh Lord, heal me. Why must God heal you again? So that you can still continue being your old selfish self, living for yourself. Everything's about you. Hello. No, no, no. See, Jesus thinned out the crowd, like with Gideon. 32,000 men got rid of all of them, brought it down to 300. All he needed to change the world was 300 people. Hallelujah. 144 men, 144 women. Hallelujah. All Jesus needed was 12. Are you hearing me? That's Jesus' mathematics. You subtract to multiply. You prune the tree to be fruitful. Oh, hallelujah. And that's what we need within our life. Absolutely committed to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I want to continue along those lines today. The few minutes I have left. Today's message is the the battle rages. Forsake all. Shout it out. Say me forsake all. Shout it out. Say me forsake all. So Luke 33 verse, uh, uh, Luke 14, 33 says the following. So likewise, where whoever of you does not forsake all, that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Forsake all that you have. Forsake all that you have. Can't hear you. Forsake all that you have. Can't hear you. Forsake all that you have. That's your gift, that's your talent, that's your accomplishments. Everything you have. He says in verse 34, salt is good, but if salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill. 
but men throw it out. He says, if you don't forsake all, you cannot be a disciple. If you're not a disciple, it means you have zero influence. Being, being famous doesn't mean you've got influence. Being known doesn't mean you've got influence. You can only really truly influence in one way. This is when you lead somebody to have a supernatural encounter with Jesus, their life is changed and transformed. That's only the only true influence there really is. The little bit of influence where you get people to do what you want them to do, that's manipulation. Yeah. And as long as you're manipulating, it will bring about the transformation and it will bring about the change. It's only when God moves and works within people's lives, you have true change. Can I get a big amen there? Yeah. So then if you're utterly useless... Because you're not a disciple. He says you're neither fit for the land nor the dunghill. And last week we looked at that word dunghill. And all of you have a word for dung. Depending on how spiritual you are. How long you've been serving the Lord. Because you're just full of dung. I don't know what your word is. If you're saved, you're full of nonsense. You're full of rubbish. I don't know what is the curse word that you use. You're full of, that's what he's saying. He says, you're so full of, you're so full of it that the salt is not even worth the dung. He says, but to be thrown out. You're living a life, a useless life. You're a millionaire and you're useless. You got an education, but you're useless. You've accomplished things in life, but you're useless. There's no influence. There's no true physical change, transformation that you're bringing within the society. But here's the thing. God wants you to be that. You see, you are born with the ability for transformation. While in your mother's womb, God knew you. He formed you. He knows you. And he's got purpose for your life. If you would forsake all. Now when we're talking about forsaking all, are we talking a vow of poverty, like having one shirt, one pair of pants and a Bible? No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about surrendering your right, surrendering your claim to, to take everything in your life and say, Lord, I belong to you. You have bought me with a price. Therefore, Lord, my life is yours. It's your life. These are your resources. This is your future. This is your business. This is your family. These are your children. Can I get a big amen there? Everything is yours, Lord. I dedicate it to you. And that is what Shanae and I do. Every one of our children that were born, we gave them back to the Lord. Every one of our grandchildren that are born, we give them back to the Lord. We want them to fulfill their God-given mandate and purpose in life, not live a useless, unfulfilled life only fit for dung. No, no, that's not how we raise our children. That's not how we raise our grandchildren. We've dedicated them. We've given them unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything. We've given our finances to the Lord. We've given our resources to the Lord. Everything we've given to the Lord. Lord, we want to be a disciple. We want to be soldiers. And therefore we surrender our right to. We surrender our claim to. But I've met people that are afraid to do it. They just cannot trust that God is good. Just cannot trust the Lord. And the reason is that well, God wants to make my life miserable. He's going to make me marry someone ugly. Where's our young people here? So like, like God is sitting and trying to work out the worst case scenario for you. He's going to make me marry somebody I don't want to marry. What, 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 what nonsense is that? Uh, he's going to make me go live where I, I don't want to live. He's going to send me to, you know, to somewhere. You know, any place where God wants you is going to be the best place for you. Always, always, always. Doesn't matter where it is. Doesn't matter where it is. Doesn't matter where God has placed you. Doesn't matter where God has called you. 
You understand? God, God will put you in the right place. Well, he's going to make me work at a place I don't I want to work. It doesn't work like that. God doesn't think like that. The plans that God has for you is greater than what you can think. Why? Because God loves you. Can I get a big amen there? He's your father. He knows better than you. His plans are better than your plans. His purposes are better than your purpose for yourself. And when we surrender our will unto God, God will give you more than what you ask for. Are you hearing me? But he's not going to give you that which is going to hurt you. He's not going to give you that which destroys you. Amen. Amen. So we ask for God for stuff and you don't get your stuff. Now you think, well, God wants you to suffer or whatever. No, no, no. God is, God is not going to give you something that's going to hurt you. Imagine you say, well, I want to be a fighter pilot. So I, I go to the Air Force and I'm, I'm 18 and I, I, I go there and I tell the guys, I want, to be a, I want to be a fighter pilot. So what happens is the general himself comes to see. Because see, see, that's how we are in our mind. The general himself comes and leads me by the hand. See, this is how we think God is. Then the general himself comes, he leads me by the hand, and then he says, here's a fighter pilot, go for it. Is that gonna happen? No, why is it not gonna happen? Because you're gonna kill yourself, come on somebody, and you're gonna kill a few people around you. Are you hearing me? It's not that you cannot and don't have the potential to maybe you know, become a fighter pilot, but here's the thing, you're going to first have to learn that no is no. You're going to have to first learn the principle of submission. So that when you are qualified and you are in the jet and you're flying the jet and they say, okay, we're sending you on a mission to go bomb uh, uh, this place, but you can only bomb it when we say so. And then suddenly you're in the air and you're flying and, and, and suddenly the, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you go, oh, and now suddenly you feel, oh, I need to go bomb. The Holy Spirit is leading me to go bomb the place. The general says, abort, abort. You say, no, I don't listen to man. It's me and God. I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I feel an unction in my heart, an unction in my spirit. I need to go boom. <laughs> While you are unctioning, they send a missile to shoot you out of the air. Are you hearing me? So we can be all super spiritual. You can't just rock up at a hospital and say, God has called me to be a surgeon. <laughs> but what education do you have? I've got a grade eight. <laughs> but I feel led by the Holy Spirit. I walk into that place and I walk around the theater bed and said, I claim it in the name of Jesus. I frame it. I declare it. I am a surgeon. I am a surgeon. I declare it. I see. I visualize the scalpel. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I see in my, in my spiritual eye. I see it. I see it. I see it. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> Are you hearing me here today? You can be all spiritual. See, but at the end of the day, you're not getting a scalpel. You're not going near a theater. Are, are you hearing me here? There is a process of development and growth. There's a process of learning, of acquiring knowledge and skill. Are you hearing me? And with that, within the unction, the Holy Spirit helps you and gives you understanding and leads you and guides you. But there's a process of development and growth that needs to take place within your life. And this in the physical. How much more now in the spiritual? Because we're laughing about piloting a plane. We're laughing about, you know, uh, 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 you know, doing an operation in the theater. But you're a parent of a human being, a live one. And you're making decisions 
about these people. Every day, willy-nilly. Just, you just decide. Why? Oh, I feel. Seriously, like the scalpel thing? Isn't it the same thing? Like you just, like I just fell, I need a scalpel. I just got to come and cut, 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 cut. That's how you raise your kids? That's how you're raising your grandkids? And it's uh, opa and umma and, 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 and whatever and stuff. Ser- seriously? So that's why within our lives, we've got to get to a place where we forsake all. So we forsake all. And get to a place where, where God can help you, lead you, guide you, and where you can trust the will of God within your life. And as you apply these principles within your life, that's why God created mankind. He knows man better than you know yourself. He knows you better than you know yourself. So he knows how you need to raise your children. He knows how, to, how you need to raise your grandchildren. Come on, somebody. He knows how we need to build the fiber of a community and a society and how we build a nation that stands. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. But we've got to apply the word of God within our lives. And for that to happen, you need to forsake all. So the devil comes and he puts all kinds of romantic things in your in your mind, all kinds of romantic things within your head. It's like driving a car, a child driving a car. You don't, you don't, your five-year-old says, oh, daddy, you want to drive a car? Then you say, I put him in the car, give him the keys. You don't do that, right? So when it comes to the things, do we really trust God? Are you prepared to forsake all, to develop and grow so that you can become what God has destined you to be? Or do you want what you want? I want what I want. I want to marry that person. (laughs) Let me explain about romantic. So you go on holiday. But you're in holiday mode. And the place is beautiful and to see and say, oh, oh, I could live here. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. That's why you don't live there. Come on, somebody. That's a lie. Oh, I could live here. No, that's a lie. People do live there and they're struggling. They've got issues. They've got their own thing. You're in holiday mode. You get pampered, you get looked after so that they can pay their bills. Don't get caught up in romanticism. Now people move, oh, now I want to go. It's calm and it's, it's peaceful here. Oh, no, it's calm and it's peaceful. No, no, no. Until you've been there for two months. You want to marry the pretty girl? Let me help you about pretty. So I was at the beach the other day. My family was there. It's a public beach, holiday, a lot of people. And I see the people swimming in the sea. And I think, wow, I want to be in that sea. Desire to be in that sea. The water's blue. Everybody's frolicking, enjoying themselves. I want to be in that sea. And as you go in the sea, there's a, you go in the sea and then there's there's like a gap. Then you've got to swim from there. You've got to swim. It's like a, then you swim and then it's like shallow again. And then you can play in the sea. I thought, I want to go there. I got my mind set. As I'm watching these young people, I forgot I'm old. (laughs) I get into the sea, I start swimming. Oh, the freshness of the water. Awesome, beautiful, blue, and I'm swimming. And I'm smiling. 
And after enjoying it for a while, my goal is to get there by the other side. <laughs> Suddenly I realize, oh, I'm getting a bit tired. <laughs> I, I, I look back, I think, whew, it was a little bit far back. <laughs> and I'm looking forward and thinking, sure, it's just here. But the more I try swim to get there, I'm not getting there. I don't panic because I've been taught not to panic. And I'm a good swimmer. So I thought. <laughs> so I started swimming and I'm swimming and swimming. Every time I swim, the wave takes me back. But not back home. <laughs> Just back enough that I can't stand. Suddenly, what seems so beautiful is not so beautiful when it's killing you. Yeah. When it's stabbing you. When it's choking the life out of you. Yeah. When it's taking every... Then pretty doesn't look so pretty anymore. Yeah. If pretty is selfish and self-centered and a pretty doesn't work anymore, like a, you see. And eventually I realized I'm not going to make it, so whoo. I put up my hands and I waved. <laughs> and the lifesavers came, and as they came, I forsook all. <laughs> and I rested in the arms of my saviors. <laughs> and they brought me to the shore. And I thought it would be a nice private. I thought it would be a nice, a nice private, you know, rescue. I forgot my family was on the beach. Of course, when my daughters saw me, they got enough energy in the three of them, and they jumped up and said, All three of them start running. Suddenly, the pi private <laughs> rescue <laughs> became a demonstration <laughs> for the whole beach on how it gets done. How to rescue the pasta. <laughs> Daddy, are you all right? <laughs> Daddy! Everybody's looking. Daddy! Okay, Daddy! I'm okay, okay. I'm going, ah, Daddy! We thought we lost you! <laughs> Everybody knew that day I was rescued. <laughs> <clears throat> Just that alone will keep me from ever going out into the sea again. <laughs> Just the public part of it. Hallelujah. It's like, whoo! But I'm saying this to say that we can romanticize something. You see, but when that thing starts killing you, you romanticize increasing your company. When it starts destroying your marriage and your family and your kids, that million that you romanticize, you know, when you start romanticizing, you see, when that thing starts killing you, it's not so pretty anymore. And therefore, I'm saying this to say, I'm saying that to say this, that we've got to get to the place where we trust the Lord. Amen. That there are things that God doesn't give or that God doesn't give immediately because we need to develop and we need to grow in Him. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. And that's why Hebrews 12 verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Lay aside the sin and that your obsession and your want. You must, bump your neighbor and say, you must nothing. Tell your neighbor, you must nothing. I must, those genes, I must. No, no, you must Nothing. Obsession. Say, Lord, I trust you more than my obsession. Amen. To the place where I become suspicious of my own desires. 
where I don't want what I do. Well, I don't want if God doesn't want it. And that's why he says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And then this is the key. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Ecclesiastes 3.14 says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away because God does it. In other words, when God does it, you don't have to worry. Nothing, there's going to be no extra. So stop having a discount mentality. It's too much pressure. I must and I must now. Anybody that puts that amount of pressure on you, don't allow that in your life. Amen. Well, you must if you don't now. If you don't buy it tonight, if you're going to, when it comes at, that's not God. God doesn't work like that. Are you hearing me yet today? No, no, no. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing taken away. Listen to Acts chapter 5. He says here in verse 38, he says, keep away from these men and let it alone. Listen to this. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. It cannot be undone. Come on, somebody. And that's why you want God involved. Yes, I want to expand, but you know what? If God's not in it, I don't want it. Yes, I can acquire this property. I can, I can do this. But if God's not in it, I don't want it. But if God's in it, I don't have to worry about it. God will cover it. God will protect it. God will keep it. Can I get a big amen there? God is in control. I look unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm not obsessed with what I am obsessed with. Why? I want what God has for my life because when God is in it, I don't have to worry. Amen. Someone takes it, they take it. They took your million, they take your million there. They've taken the million. So what? When you got that million, there's other millions available. If you could get the million in the first place, you can get it again. Unless you stole it, then that's a problem. You understand? Then you have to worry. But God will protect it. God will keep it. Are you blessed? Stand to your feet, please. Just stay where you are. Hallelujah. This is a powerful word, people. I close off with Ephesians chapter 3.17. He says, being rooted and grounded in love that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge. Say with me, God is a good God. God loves me. Are you hearing me? God is not playing games with you. He's not playing hide and seek. He's not playing catch and play. God is not playing games with you. God's got purpose for your life. He's here to grow you, to develop you. And then listen to verse 20. You see, when you know how much God loves you, verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we may ask or think, according to the power that works within us, I like the Amplified Version. It says, super, abundant, super abundantly, far above that which we dare ask, think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Listen to me. Our little dreams is small and minute compared to what God wants to do in your life. And I want to encourage you Forsake all. Forsake all. Stop being obsessed with your obsessions. Stop being obsessed. That prison you're in. No, let it go. Say, Lord, I trust you. I'm going to be a disciple. Whatever you want me to be, whatever you want me to do, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I'm going to forsake all. The battle rages. We're fighting for the soul of our kids. We're fighting for the soul of this nation. We're fighting for the soul of this continent. We need you in our lives. Well, this obsession with our obsessions, with self and our desires, done with that, we trust you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Won't you lift up your hands just there where you are. And say to me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father please, forgive please forgive my lukewarmness, my lukewarmness 
my lack of faith and trust in your love towards me. Give me a revelation of your love that I might know the width, the length, the depth, the height, the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge. And I thank you, Lord, as I submit as a disciple to do the Bible, to trust the Bible, to trust your word. You are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we dare ask or think beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. I trust you, Lord, with my life, with my future, with our nation, everything I give to you, I surrender to you. We trust you with our lives. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If there's somebody here, you've not yet given your life to Jesus. This is where it starts. Calling yourself Christian doesn't mean you're Christian. Saying you're Christian doesn't mean you're Christian. You must be born again. God has to do the miracle in your life. You deciding, you, you making a statement doesn't mean squat. You have to say, Lord, I surrender my life unto you. No more me being God. I'm a sinner. I need you. God will come. He'll change your heart, change your do a supernatural miracle. Therefore, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, if that's you, you want to come to Jesus. Maybe you, you've given your life to Jesus and you've backslidden and you're lukewarm. You want to come back to the Lord or maybe you've never done it before. If that's you, quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hands going up all over, all over the place. Thank you, thank you. Right there at the back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I wonder if you can do one more thing. If you raised your hand, I need to do a personal prayer with you. And throughout all our venues, if you raised your hand, grab your belongings, don't leave it on the chairs. Quickly come out of the house, quickly come front. Bow your heads in prayer. Just bow your heads in prayer. Say these words with me. Say to me, dear Jesus, I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Everything that I am, I give to you. My whole life, I surrender unto you. Lord, I trust you. I trust your word. It says, if I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called the child of God. And as from now, I belong to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 112345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 00. Four, six, or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY 
followed by your prayer request to 33347. And our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.